Hello, I'm Mistress Catherine, and welcome to today's episode of Bondage on a Buck. Today we're going to make shackles. And if you don't know what they are, they're sort of like handcuffs, but not quite. <laughs> they are most often seen in like the creepy dungeons and in horror movies. So we're going to make those. <laughs> So what you're going to need are four of these. I found these in the piping aisle in Menards. But of course, any hardware store should have these. And I forget what size these are. Oh yes, here we go. Um, they're one and a half inches. And these say they are galvanized pipe straps. So you're going to need four of these. And <coughs> I guess it depends on who you're going to put these on because I was judging just on my wrist. And so, you might choose something a little bigger, something smaller, and it depends on if you want cushioning or not. Now, normally shackles do not have cushioning. See, there's quite a bit of room, but I want cushions, so I made mine a little bit more roomy. I believe um, the one person who sent me this idea he sent me a picture of shackles and he's like, you can make these for your show. And I was like, sure. Um, I believe he used one inch. So it really depends on what you want. And then you're going to need, what are these? Um, two inches long by three sixteenths diameter um, screw in nut set. So we're going to open these up and get started. And then a couple of these, what are these called? Uh, these are like in, near the rope, where all the, like the climbing things are, where they are. I'm not sure what those are called either. <laughs> I don't know this terminology, I just make stuff. That's all that matters, right? Alright, so now we won't need these things anymore. These little tags. Oh, I should grab my gloves real quick. Took them off for the last project because I didn't want them to get stained. There we go. Ah, eh, they'll wear off over time. All right, so it's a very simple project. All you need to do is you are going to put these through oh there's stickers on these I'll just pop that right through there we go so I guess take off the stickers first residue when you're taking these off, what I like to use is peanut butter. Yes, peanut butter is good for not only eating, but cleaning residue, and oh, I could insert a bestiality reference right here. So, I will try to keep this clean. Sometimes it's not so easy. Okay, good, I think all the stickers are off, sweet, all right, so you are going to insert these screws through, we're just going to do without the insulation first, without nice cushioning, I will add that on the next one because it really depends on what you're going for. If you're going for comfort or not. So then we're just going to screw them on, not all the way just yet. Okay, pretty good enough because once you have that done, 
You are going to take one of these and unscrew it so you have enough room and insert it through there. Now, so we're just going to set this aside. Alright, well I guess we can just do this. We can do this real quick because it's kind of needed to show you the, like, I don't want to say unfinished version, but the, I'll call it the creepy dungeon version. Are you getting ideas yet? <laughs> I'm sure you are. Yeah, the dungeon where I work, they have some fake shackles. They're made out of styrofoam, I guess. They're just for decoration. Because we try to do comfort stuff. Most of the time. Even even the oh what do you call those? The stocks. They even have like fur lines so it's comfortable. Alright, so nearly done with this one. Cool. Now you will need chain as well. And this one well there's ten feet, so there's plenty in here. And I got 250 pounds. Which I kind of liked because I like to have people like this and be kind of lifted a little bit. But I would not do that without like the insulation things, you know, covering the shackles. Because if you're hanging someone up just with these shackles, these will bite into the skin. So I, I wouldn't recommend it if you're doing a lot of play where there's a lot of thrashing, um, you know, a lot of stuff going on. You don't want to hurt your toy, which is your sub. Because if you, if you break your toy, you won't be able to play with it later. And that'd be sad. Hey, Mr. Blue Bunny. You want some attention, don't ya? You got my hair all over you. I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, so now we are going to put some chain on here. See, isn't it looking lovely already? So this is gonna depend how much length you wanna give yourself. I'm gonna put this on. This Mr. Blue Bunny's arms are a little bit like shorter than mine, so there's just a little diff like distance. Mine are longer, so we're gonna use mine. Sorry, Mr. Blue Bunny, you couldn't help this time. All right, so I'm gonna want it like about this. Of course, if you want to have it even longer, let's say you want it. Okay. It really depends. If you just are planning on doing a scene where they're just like walking and you're pulling on it, then this is probably a pretty good length. But if you're doing a scene where they're wearing these and you make a set for the feet as well, that'd be cool. Um, you might want to like then perhaps make this longer and when they're sitting or standing, it really depends on your preference. Let's just say standing for a moment. Let's just say they're standing. You want to have enough chain here and there um, to maybe connect them together so there's a shackle on each wrist and ankle and so then they have to walk like this. So it kind of limits their movement a little bit. So you can do it that way where, you know, like again, these are a bit longer and then you take one of those, the climbers clips and you just clip it together. Or if you want to buy two more of these, these things right here, then you can make this, you know, like about this and down there about the same and then you just use additional chain to connect those with this connecting the chain here and the chain down by the feet. 
So you do have options and you do have plenty of chain. So you can think about that. And the great thing about this right here, you could always change your mind and replace chain. But for now, I am going to do it right about there. So you will need a bolt cutters. Hopefully you have one and you're not getting into trouble with it. Hopefully you're not that naughty. But you shouldn't be. All right, so set a wonder about there. <laughs> I have way too much fun sometimes. All right, and being careful, you are going to cut through this. I'm sure it's not the first time for him. That sassy boy. Alright, let's finish this. Where did I cut it? Now I know I cut it in broken square. Ah, oh, here it is. Alright. So it looks like I need to do the other side as well. Let's see. Mmm. Fun sounding. All right. Now we have chain. Nice length. So here we go. So ta-da. Now we just. Tighten this. Very tight. Cool. So now you have shackles. Now I don't have anybody here to tighten them. Okay, I guess I can. <laughs> But I can still slip out of them because there's still plenty of space. But, so here we go. This is the hmm, not so nice version of these. I always say that because of the lack of insulation. But if this is what you're going for, you're done. Isn't that quick and easy? And you get a nice workout too. Now, if you're like me, you're going to want some comfort because you might be in these for an hour. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we are going to use pipe insulation. This is one inch diameter pipe insulation. I don't think it really matters like how big it is. Just as long as you have enough thickness right here. All right, so I need to go check on the time. I'll be right back. Okay, good to go. So we're going to have to take these apart. But let's move the chain first. You should always clean up your space when you are done, so you always have plenty of room. I think we'll need this. Alright, so now we are going to undo these nuts and screws so we can get at the shackles better.
Almost done. Great. Now you can put this in here. Kind of measure how much you need. So that looks about right. And then you can cut along it. So you can make your mark, and then you can just open this up and cut. I tend to freehand a lot of things, so I might have to redo some more trimming. But if you have something that kind of guides you, if you want to take a marker and mark and get it perfect, more power to you. I'm just too lazy. <laughs> Well, mostly it's time-based. I don't have a lot of time. All right, and I like to use either end so I know one edge is completely perfect, nice and smooth. So of course, you saw I cut like right here. All right, cool. Now, all you need to do, oh yes, <laughs> we're cutting four of these. I hear my poor kitty at the door meowing, so I want to get to him. So I'm not thinking properly at the moment. Anyway, so cut four of those. So now what you could do is to attach these to the shackles. You can use hot glue, which I'm going to use. We'll see how that works. <laughs> Otherwise, double-sided sticky tape. That would be fantastic. So if you have that, use that. Otherwise, if you're like me and you have hot glue like right here, just use that. Oh, before I forget, before you attach, you need to cut this down to size. So, yeah, stay right about it. Like right about in there. Right where the curve is. And try not to cut your fingers off. Because that would hurt. And I'm not sure how to explain that at work the next day. That'd be an interesting conversation with your boss. He'd be like, what happened? And you'd be like, yeah, well, I was watching Mistress Catherine cut some insulation for making mat or shackles. And I cut my finger off. And hopefully your boss will be watching 
these episodes. So he'd be like, oh, I understand. Take the rest of the day off. <laughs> you probably wouldn't be so lucky. All right, so we're gonna fill this with hot glue. You can either put it in here like I'm doing or you can put it on the insulation. It's totally up to you. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> All right, so word of warning. When using hot glue, it is really hot. And not only is it hot when it comes out of the gun, because this is metal, heat transfers. So you will feel it <laughs> on the metal. So be careful. Oh, any more hot glue? Glue sticks. And try to be quick because this glue dries relatively quickly. Push that insulation in there really good. I would suggest maybe using cotton gloves if you're using hot glue. So your fingers don't get so hot and perhaps burn. Unless you have a burning fetish. fetish. Yeah, burning fetish. Huh. Yes, my dears, there's a fetish for everything. And don't worry if there's excess glue that peeks out from your shackle, you can always carefully cut that off later. When I'm putting them in, I'm trying to put them right in the middle so I don't have to do too much moving of the insulation. Ooh, nice and cushy. All right, fantastic. So you got those all done. You can do your whole little... <laughs> it's stuck to the table. Yeah, I used a lot of hot glue on that one. All right, so now put these together again. looking very lovely, aren't they? I like it. Or them, since there's more than one. Oh, it's my dress. Very ladylike if my dress comes up all the way. I can't have that.
there you are. So now you have shackles with some nice cushioning. Now, if you want to make sure that your sub cannot escape, because as you saw, anyone can get out of this. So instead of using this piece right here, you can use a lock, which adds more weight. So you can put a lock here, here, you know, the lock and key type of thing, obviously, here and there. So there you go. Two ways of using or making these shackles with some other ideas of what you can do with these once you have them. So why don't you go make them and try them out. Oh, I should try them on a Mr. Bunny here real quick. Well, he's going to escape anyway, but we'll just do something really quick. See? Now, it doesn't really look cute and helpless. <laughs> well, enjoy! So we're going into the kitchen for some BDSM treats. These treats are cookie cutters. And not just any old cookie cutter, the metal kinds. The metal kind's more fun because it has a more of a sharp edge. Not sharp enough to really cut somebody, although I'm sure if you used enough force and pressure you probably could. But we're not going to go that far. Unless you're into blood play and, well, <laughs> to each his or her own, you know, limits and all that. Just be careful. Anyway, so there's two ways you can use these metal cookie cutters. I will tell you the first one, which is kind of dangerous, and I highly suggest not doing it unless you, I would say, have like a medic nearby. You, you know exactly what you're doing. So a lot more research has to go into it. For those who like branding, um, you want to use cookie cutters the thin metal kind and if you're going to do this make sure there's gap because the skin will burn and it scars and it's permanent so you want to make sure there's an opening so that the, there's a way for the skin inside to heal as well as the skin around it really really important again like i said um, don't try it unless you are qualified and you know what you're doing and a lot of research it has to go into it but this is what people would use, because I've had people ask me about branding. And no, I don't do it, so don't ask. Okay, now for the original reason why I have these out here. <laughs> so, cookie cutters are fun, um, because when you push them onto the body, it leaves a bit of a mark. I'm pale, so it's a little small. This is more for the, the puttocks and the back and all those fun places. The smaller ones, so you can see the mark. The smaller ones can be used pretty much anywhere. And it leaves a little bit, bit of a mark. And also it has this kind of a fun sensation. It's kind of like tingly, a little stingy a little bit. But you don't feel it at first, but it's, it kind of creeps up on you. And so that's kind of nice if you're doing sensation play, if your sub has a blindfold on then I would highly suggest using these. Let's see if this would work on Mr. Blue Bunny here. See, because he has a heart. Mm, and I love Mr. Blue Bunny. Did you like that? I think he did. <laughs> anyway, so I hope you enjoyed learning something new about cookie cutters, the two ways you can use them. The first yeah, I wouldn't try myself. The second one, try all you want. Pressing on the body, get fun little different shapes. Maybe good for a little age play. Because, I mean, who hasn't played with cookie cutters when they were a kid? You know? <laughs> so what other fun things do you have at home? Go look and find out and see how you can turn them into some BDSM fun. Mm.